<laughs> oh shit, <laughs> that's huge. I mean, even just this case of stuff. I'm telling you, I'm doing this case of stuff and I wanna go and call every judo instructor I've had over my entire life and just tell them how their case is shit. Well, that's gonna be a stinger for the video. <laughs> 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 <that way. laughs> All right, hi y'all. Uh, Dean Salehian from Kama Jiu Jitsu. Uh, we thought we'd do a video today, kind of following up on some of the themes that we've done uh, in the past on uh, judo and jiu jitsu and the relationship between the two. Um, so if, if you've seen the other videos that I've appeared in, you know that uh, I was a judo black belt, practiced judo for a number of years, um, and then came to Kama Jiu Jitsu. And for the last two years or so, uh, almost two years we've been doing a judo program here at Kama Jiu Jitsu. So I just kind of wanted to discuss my experiences teaching judo at a jiu jitsu school and some of the modifications we had to make uh, over the last couple of years to the, the style of ju judo that I was used to and the, and the purpose of, uh, of what we're doing at Kama Jiu Jitsu. So I came from a, a competition judo background. Uh, I started judo in college. Um, moved to Texas, continued with judo. But um, for most judo schools, you know, not all, but for most judo schools, their focus is getting ready for the next tournament. Um, and that does, in a way, focus your training. So that typically means you always train in gi. It typically means that in Nawaza, there are certain rules of Nawaza, um, such as pins counting, um, which, which incentivizes going to turtle. Uh, certain grips are illegal, certain grips are, 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 are um, legal or illegal. A few years ago, judo took out leg, take, leg grabs. So that kind of conditions the training that most judo schools are doing. You know, as you know from this channel, Ryan's done a bunch of videos on sport jujitsu and self-defense jujitsu and some of the differences between the two. It's not to say one is right or one is wrong or one is better or one is worse, but they have different purposes. So coming from experience of doing sport judo and then teaching judo at a jujitsu school, it kind of frees you up not to be bound by the rules and to think about um, alternative ways of entering into throws. Uh, techniques that maybe are less emphasized in, uh, in other uh, judo schools. Um, and it also means that the Nawaza is completely different. The Nawaza we do at Kama Jiu Jitsu is the Kama Jiu Jitsu system. And there's tons of videos on that and, and what that's about. But then we've had to adapt the judo to the Kama Jiu Jitsu self-defense oriented system. So what does that mean? It means that students have to be prepared to enter into um, into their clinches or enter into their throws being prepared for strikes, something that's almost universally neglected in, uh, in judo schools. Uh, it means that we have fewer restrictions on things that you can and can't do in terms of techniques. Yes, we wanna be safe, so we're not gonna do certain techniques um, that are just inherently dangerous, but things like um, double legs, morote gari, or um, ankle picks, that's bread and butter in our, in our training now. We don't really think about legal and illegal grips. You can sort of grip how you want. And the other big difference I would say, and actually probably the biggest learning curve for me is every three months, every summer for three months, we train judo with no gi. Some judo schools around the country have started to do a no gi judo class, but by and large for the vast majority of competition oriented schools, they're still bound by doing judo with a gi. Um, so, Judo without a gi does change your entry into various techniques considerably. Um, certain techniques that rely on the gi, like uh, morote suyunagi, the one where you grab the, the collar and the, and the sleeve and you turn this way, um, just won't work with no gi. Uh, the the sode surikomigoshi, where you're grabbing both sleeves and you enter into the throw that way, don't work no gi. So um, there are different throws that are more appropriate for no gi, um, and you have to be much sharper with your entries because uh, you, know, you don't have the luxury of that, of that friction, that grip, that, that strong grip that you can take and use the gi to enter into throws. So all that being said, what this means in a nutshell is when, because we're not bound by the rules of the next competition, because we're not thinking about the next IJF tournament, the next USA Judo tournament exclusively. I mean, if people want to compete, 
they're more than welcome to do so, but we're not bound by those set of competition rules. It frees us up to, to explore um, you know, quite a few alternative um, methods of judo. And I think it's been just amazing for me, right? I, I did judo for, for many years at a competition-oriented school, um, and now I've had to sort of rethink some of the things that we do in judo uh, or have traditionally done in judo and think about how that fits into a self-defense jiu-jitsu context. Um, so in a way, I think we, we're kind of getting back to original judo. I mean, original judo, the way Jigoro Kano uh, you know, envisioned it and the early pioneers envisioned it, it was a, it was a comprehensive martial art. And you know, we've talked in, in other videos that you know, original judo, and if you still look at ju judo textbooks, has strikes in it, has excellent newaza, excellent groundwork in it. Um, some of the early textbooks have things like foot locks and uh, knee bars and things like that. Um, so the original judo, I think, was, was far more complete, uh, far more nuanced, and far more focused on self-defense and combat, in addition to the, you know, the, the character development and the physical development that Jigoro Kano emphasized, it was a combat uh, martial art. As we've gone toward a more competition mindset, um, it's really, in my view, limited the, the types of techniques and the mentality we go to uh, with our training. So you know, in a way, that's sort of a cautionary tale um, judo became so overwhelmingly focused on competition in my view, and not just my view, but in the view of a lot of uh, judoka around the world, has become so focused on IJF and Olympic style judo that part of the art, uh, a large part of the art has been, uh, if not lost, de-emphasized. So I think you know, the mix of, of Gracie Jiu Jitsu, um, self-defense oriented Jiu Jitsu in addition to a solid judo program um, has really done wonders for my thinking, and I think our students have benefited from it as well. I mean, even just this Kaza stuff. I'm telling you, I'm doing this Kaza stuff, and I wanna go and call every judo instructor I've had over my entire life and just tell them how their Kaza is shit. I mean, look, judo, Kaza Gatame is, so <clears throat> I'll give you a little, uh, a, a little story and you can edit this in. What sold me on Kama Jiu Jitsu? Come in, judo guy. I know how to do keza. It's the first pin you learn in judo. Most uh, judo players, first pin they learn is keza gatame. I've been doing it for 20 years. I think I have a pretty solid keza. Um, and I, you know, I do have a pretty solid keza. But then Ryan gets out of my keza two seconds. And then I'm like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready. Let me, let me, let me try again, boom. Two seconds. Okay, let me try the other side. Still gets out. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, did I just waste my time for 20 years doing this stuff? Um, and once I learned the escapes and the, and the little nuance of the escape, I'm like, man, Keza is a terrible hold. Um, you know, you have relatively few submissions from Keza and relatively few transitions from Keza. I mean, I'm not just gonna say I don't do Keza, because sometimes that's, that's all you have, but um, it's not my go-to anymore. Whereas, you know, judo players, is their go-to because they think no one can get out of my Keza. Well, the good, a good Keza escape is kind of hard to counter and hard to beat. So, uh, so yeah, that, that kind of blew my mind and, and um, that's why I'm still here. I'm still learning little nuances on, on Keza escapes. That's what we did tonight, it was Keza escapes. I'm like, man, I still have a lot to learn, <laughs> even on stuff that I thought I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the UFC started and everyone was talking about, what is this stuff? No one has seen this. They're fighting on the ground and, you know, they're doing arm bars and chokes from the ground and they've never seen the Hoist Gracie before because everyone is associated martial arts with Kung Fu and Karate. Right? It was Bruce Lee and Karate Kid and that's what they associated martial arts with. Everyone thought the strikers were going to dominate and it was Hoist Gracie doing um, ground techniques. Um, and it was billed and the media hype was that this is new, this is brand new, no one ever seen this before. And a lot of uh, older judo people were like, um, you know, almost like, well, we, we've, we've been doing this stuff all along, right? We, we do Nawaza too. We know the, all of these arm bars and these, these chokes and so on that Hoist Gracie is successful with. That's part of our art. They didn't invent it. It's nothing new. Um, and in a way, you know, it, it goes without saying that the history of jujitsu is that it came from um, 
you know, Japanese judoka going to Brazil. So there was this kind of defensiveness about like, you know, how are you claiming all of this is new when we've been doing this for, for a long time? I think a younger generation, you know, they see that the, that the uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu has really worked in mixed martial arts competitions. Um, any judoka who's honest with themselves and goes to a very high level quality jiu-jitsu school recognizes that the level of sophistication, the level of, um, of technical detail in the ground fighting is superior to what you're gonna find at most judo schools. Some judo schools have excellent newaza, but um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you know, that's their specialty. So, uh, you know, recognizing that uh, we want to be well-rounded martial artists, a lot of judo players, younger generation are more open to cross-training between the two, and I think vice versa is true. I think more and more jiu-jitsu players are learning that, you know, our takedowns are not that good. So they're looking out to wrestling or judo um, to round that out. So I think there's been a, a lot more cross-fertilization now where judo, jiu-jitsu, sambo, wrestling, all of these grappling arts are starting to learn from each other and it's making for more uh, creativity and more dynamic game. Um, and you know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's only a positive. Uh, and if you, you, know, you, you look at uh, the Gracies back in Brazil, um, you know, I seem to believe, I remember that you know, Hicks and Gracie did train a little bit of judo and entered into sambo tournaments. So he was willing to open up to, uh, you know, to other styles. I think Halls Gracie did wrestling for a while, right? So um, you know, they were open to cross-training and fertilizing, cross-fertilizing with other martial arts to make their art better. And I think that's only a, only a good thing. I think the younger generation of judo uh, players understand that. The older generation, maybe there was a little bit of reluctance to, uh, to accept this uh, thing that was billed as being new, but they thought of as just part of their art all, all along. It's not a lot, but there are some schools um, that are doing no-gi judo, and they're often tied to Brazilian jiu-jitsu or MMA type programs where you, know, you, you might know you're going into a, into a cage fight and your opponent doesn't have a gi. So if you look at successful judo, judoka that have made the transition, like Ronda Rousey or now Kayla Harrison, she's been doing some really exciting fights, or Cara Parisian or others, you know, they were fully aware that their basic judo training with the gi, um, they would have to adapt to a no-gi environment. Their entries are gonna have to be um, different. People are much slipperier without a gi. So there's a little bit of a learning curve. I mean, it's not a, I won't say it's a huge learning curve, right? So someone who has solid, gi judo background you know within a few months they can really pick up the no gi stuff but the the flow the feel the pace uh, is a little bit different so um, to the extent that judo schools are doing no gi it's often because they're they're training for a different set of uh, a different environment a more mma or self-defense focused environment and i think a lot of people in the mma and, and jiu-jitsu world are starting to see the value of judo and incorporate it into their programs do you think it's kind of a good thing or a bad thing or do you think it's just it's, it's excellent. I mean, I, I, I've always believed that the more knowledge you have, the better. It's important to focus on um, a core art, whether that's judo or jujitsu or, or kickboxing or whatever, to really focus and get really solidly good, but then explore. So if you're primarily um, a wrestler and that's your core art, you know, stick with that. But it's good to have a little bit of striking knowledge so you, so you know how to, to defend against it. You know what's coming. You're not caught uh, by surprise. Um, if you're a judo person, you know, and that's your core, core art, it's good to sort of explore with, with um, other things, different ways of doing groundwork so you're not caught uh, off guard. So that cross-training is good, uh, but cross-training is different than dabbling, right? So there are people, and you see them all the time, they're dabblers. They'll do you know, six months here, uh, nine months there, three months there, all different martial arts, and they never really get a solid foundation in any one. So I think you know, developing solid expertise in something um, and really focusing on that, but then, you know, once your, your foundation is there, branching out and um, trying to just see what else is out there. I think you can, you can learn a lot and it opens your, your 
uh, mind to what you could be doing differently in your own foundation art. There, you know, there are some people that have come to judo and 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 left. There are some people that are reluctant to try it, and you know, I get it. There's and there's a variety of reasons, and I and I don't know anyone's motives for doing judo or not doing judo. We have a core group of students that are always here. They're always doing it, and other people dabble. For some people, it's a matter of time. Right? It doesn't work for their schedule. They can't make it. Uh, so another reason why people might be hesitant to, to try judo is that they're just reluctant to, to take the falls. And you know, we try to make the training um, age appropriate and appropriate for the skill level. So you know, we, we very much emphasize safety and we have these excellent cushioned mats, which are honestly the nicest mats I've ever trained on because uh, they have a lot of spring to them. Um, you know, so some people are hesitant to take the falls and they just can't mentally get over the idea of somebody picking them up and slamming to the mat. So some people, you know, maybe are reluctant to do judo for, for that. I think a big reason why a lot of people uh, don't is because, you know, it's daunting to try to learn two arts uh, simultaneously, right? So people would sign up for a jujitsu school and they're expecting to learn jujitsu and they think of judo as being something different. So I have to learn all of this curriculum and all of this system of, of jujitsu, what Ryan teaches, and then I have to add judo on top of that. So it can be overwhelming to, to some people, and I understand that. Um, you know, I hope people appreciate that, that really judo and jujitsu are not uh, fundamentally different, but complement each other, and at one point were um, much more integrated than they are now. Um, you know, and, and some people just might not like me, right? They, they like Ryan. Um, he's a, a nice gregarious guy and he's a YouTube celebrity, but like, um, you know, uh, some people might just, uh, just not like my, my teaching style um, and they gravitate toward, toward someone else and, and that's fine too. So there's all kinds of reasons why people might, might do or not do jujitsu, um, you know, and that's fine. But we do have a core group of people uh, that, that are doing it regularly. We've, we've belted people in judo um, and, and some people are getting really good. Um, and I think that has, in a way, kind of upped the game of everybody here, even if you're not doing judo, because in the jujitsu class, um, you know, that Ryan teaches and the other instructors teach, we, we do takedowns, we do hip throws, we do uh, what Ryan calls a toilet bowl, but in, uh, in judo is Tanya Toshi. And because people have done judo with me, their, their entries into the hip throws are much cleaner and they can, they can impart that knowledge on other people in the class that maybe are not doing judo. Uh, or if, same with the break falls and so on, right? So when you, when you up the game of, of some people, I think that has just a positive impact on, on the training of everyone else uh, you know, when they're doing their, their you know, self-defense takedowns and things like that. Mm -hmm.